Welcome to another Python QGIS tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, well, I'm going to show you how you can load layers, load layer information using Python uh, for layers that are already loaded into your QGIS interface. So that's what we'll cover today. And just to let you know of some other videos that have planned to come up, we're going to do a video on getting data from raster layers. So a couple videos ago, I showed you how you can query data from a raster layer. We're gonna do the same thing for vector layers. And then we're gonna move into actually some more powerful analysis that can be done using GDAL and NumPy for rasters and then using OGR and also NumPy and some other Python libraries for vectors. And so that will really get us into some data analysis using the these GIS layers. So if you're interested in seeing those videos when they come out, um, please subscribe and you'll get notified for those. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started on uh, today's tutorial. So open up your Python console. It can be found in plugins, Python console right here. Um, this is an old file. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start a new script here. And I'm going to make a new file for a raster file name. Actually, I'm not going to do that. So what I have here, I have two layers loaded in. So as you can see, let's make this a little smaller. Oops, I don't want to pull the dock. Let's make this a little smaller for you. So I've got a digital elevation model, and then I have a streams layer overlaid on part of that digital elevation model. So I've got a raster and a vector layer. And so what I'll do here, I'm going to just make this bigger again. Um, I'm going to show you how I can get information from these that are already loaded into QGIS without a file name or anything. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do layers. So we're going to get the layers from the interface. And so this is going to be QGS project dot instance. And then we want to get the map layers. And for this, I want to get, let's start with a DEM. So we'll do map layers by name. And then I'm going to say DEM. And what this will return is it will return a list of the layers. So if the, I could have multiple layers that have the same name, it will return all those layers. So let's go ahead and click run here. Okay. And that ran successfully. So if I type layers in over here, now it will print out layers. And what you can see is that it's a QGS raster layer object. Now, a property of layers of a raster layer would be named. So if I do layers.name, I get an error. And that's because this is a list. Even though there's only one layer, it still returns a list. And so I can go. Let's do this first. Let's do len layers. So this will give us the length of layers, and you can see it's one. The length is one. So now if I do layers zero, you can see this is still a raster layer object. And now if I go layers zero dot name, it will print out DEM. And so there you can see that I printed out DEM. Now just to show you how uh, this would work if I had multiple DEM layers. I'm going to add another one here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and grab another layer here real quick. And it is located in SMR, Trimmer Peak, DEM, DEM. So this is also dem.tiff. It's located in a completely different area. But let's go ahead and we'll just add this to my script. So I'm going to do print len layers. So that will give me the length. And then I'm going to do for layer in layers print layer name. Okay, and that should print out dem twice. And so that'll just give us an idea of what's going on. So let's go ahead and click run here. 
And there you go, you can see now it's two, two different layers and I have DEM and DEM. Now, one thing that we might wanna do is for each of these layers, we may want to get a file name. And this will be useful later when we start loading uh, layers and loading data with GDEL because we'll need those file names in order to get the data for raster bands. And so here we can get that by doing later layer dot data provider dot URI. I'm just going to check that URI part and make sure that's correct. So this is actually data source URI. Okay, so now this will print out um, the layer name and then it will print out the path to that layer. So let's go ahead and click run here. And so there you can see that it printed them in the order they appear in the table of contents. We have DEM and that's the streamer peak DEM and then we have this other DEM which is the one that corresponds to stream order. Okay, so now for vector layers, we actually do this the exact same way. Um, so we'll call this V layers and we'll do equals QGS uh, project dot instance and then map layers by name. And this time uh, we have stream underscore order. Okay. And so that'll give us our layers. So let's go print len v layers. And then we'll go for layer in v layers print layer name. And we can print the file path for the same the same way with this or with vector layers. So we'll do print layer dot data provider data source URI. Okay, so now when I click run, what should happen uh, is I should be able to just print out, it should print out everything for first for the vector, for the raster layers and second for the vector layers. So let's go ahead and click run here. Okay, and there you go. Um, so you can see with this file path, we also have a layer ID number and we can check to make sure this file path is going to be good to load us back in by doing this. We can come down and we can actually uh, try to add this back in. So we'll call this test layer equals iface dot add vector layer. And then we can do uh, V layers. And so since this we can do V layers, we can access the first element in V layers. And then we can go dot data provider dot data source URI. And then we're gonna need to give this the, the data provider, which is gonna be OGR and a layer name. And I'm gonna, I think it goes layer name first, and then the data provider second. And I'll just double check that for you. Okay, so that should be correct. Um, now we'll see if this line happens to throw an error of any kind or if we get stream order added again out here. So let's go ahead and click run. And you can see it didn't throw us an error. It did add stream order up here. It added it again. And so you can grab this file name even with this layer ID. Uh, you can grab that file name straight from your QGIS interface and use it to load in the layer again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment this line out for now. We're not gonna need that. Um, and I wanna show you a couple other things you can do, how you can access some more information. So I'm gonna remove this layer again so we don't have a duplicate in there. Uh, remove layer. And so we'll just print something else out up here for the rasters. So print layer.bands, and then we'll do layer.height, layer dot width. And so these are all properties you can access uh, for a raster layer. And if you want to know the properties of raster layers, you can come over to the 
QGIS documentation. So here I just Googled QGIS raster layer, and here's the QGIS API documentation for QGIS raster layer. Now, I will warn you, this is going to be the C++ documentation, um, not the Python documentation, but it does have notes in there to let you know if this functionality does not exist. So what I want to do is I'm going to come down here to public member functions, and you can see I have band count, I have band name, um, I actually think I just put bands in there, so I need to change that to band count. You have data provider, um, you have the height here, and you have a lot of other functionality in this that will return attributes about the layer and that will give you functionality to perform actions with the layer. And so as we go forward in these tutorials, we'll work, work more with some of the functionality. Um, but right now I'm just going to show you some of these properties we can access. And so here's width down here. Um, so if you ever wonder where I'm getting this information, a lot of it comes from this API documentation. So let's go back to QGIS and change this back to band count. And then I'm going to click run here. The vector output will stay the same. When we print out the um, raster output, we should see uh, some an extra line of information that gets printed out for each raster. And this will help us see the differences between these two rasters that we loaded in. So I'll go ahead and click run here. Okay, and so here's our raster information. So you can see for the first raster, it has one band. It has 45 pixels in height and 42 in width. And then for our second raster, it also has one band, but its height is 2,811 pixels. And its width is 2,109, so it's a much bigger raster. All right, so that's just uh, the basics of how you can get information from layers that are already listed in your table of contents in your QGIS interface and get information from them using the QGIS Python API. Um, once again, if you want to see the code for this, I'll work on getting it up on my website, which is opensourceoptions.com, uh, and I'll include a link to that in the description. And I have other videos um, about the, the QGIS Python API and using that for writing scripts. And so if you're interested in those, go ahead and look at the previous videos I posted. And I will be posting more videos about those topics uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So if you're interested in seeing these videos as they come out, once again, feel free to subscribe. I really appreciate the support. Um, and good luck with your programming and development endeavors.